Hey, good morning, guys. Ed Frolish with the First Time Gardener. Hey, we're coming back to you this morning. It's real early. It's 6.30. Down here in Florida where we live, it's been hot, hot, hot. So trying to get an early start this morning before it gets too hot um, to do some of this work. So today, we're going to see that we're going to work on our garden today and get it ready for our summer, <clears throat> our long, hot summer. And we're going to address the soil today and I'm going to show you what we're going to do to address the soil. We're going to clean out all the plots except for the ones that have the sweet potatoes in. I'm going to let them grow probably another two to three weeks before I dig them up. So everything else is going to be pulled out, tilled, and um, we're going to do some prep work for a cover garden today is what we're going to prep our big plots for for over the summer. We're not really going to grow any vegetables or anything. It's just too hot down here. Cover crops, there's a lot of cover crops. And before you decide on a cover crop, if you're going to do this, there's a couple things you need to think about. Some of the cover crops that you can put in are good for the soil, good for the birds, good for the bees. But the problem is after everything is grown through its cycle and it's died off, depending on the equipment you have, it's going to be tough to cultivate that back into the ground. So like sunflowers, they're good because they draw the bees. They look pretty over the summer, but they get a massive ball root. And they also have the stalks that come up and they're pretty thick. So if you don't, on a little plot like this here, if you don't have a big ass tractor in order to chop all that stuff up when you till it, I mean, it's just going to be, you know, way more work than it's good for so that's the other thing got to make sure you have the equipment that you need in order to till this back in afterwards and the other thing you got to think about is there's a long term and a short term cover crop so like right now i only have about two months maybe two and a half months and before i'm getting ready to plant my fall garden so you don't want a cover crop that takes six months cycle there's a lot of differences of the different cover crops you can get time it takes to grow so I've done some research and I'm going to show you what I ordered today and it's going to be a short term cover crop that in six weeks it's already grown there's flowers on it to draw the bees and then I can cycle it into the ground put the nutrients back into the ground and then plant my fall crop so that's what we're going to do today it's going to be a long day I'm going to take you along on the different processes that we're going to do in the garden so follow me along through the day hopefully this is going to be informational to you for your garden that you're trying to do so that you know what to do over your summer if you're in the same situation like me it's just too hot and you don't feel like getting out there every day and uh, weeding and watering and all that stuff so once you establish this cover ground for the first like week you water it every day after you plant the seeds and then pretty much you don't have to worry about it Maybe once every three days, you put a little bit of water on it. Let me show you what I ordered. All right, here's the magical box we're going to open today. Inside here are the seeds that I ordered for my part of my fall garden. I didn't order everything yet. I'm going to show you what I'm going to plant in the fall. And also what my cover crop is that I'm going to be planting in this after we get these beds ready for the cover crop. All right, let's open this bad boy up. Okay, and by the way, these seeds here I got from Haas Tools. Haas Tools has a lot of, if you go on their website, they have a lot of small gardening hand tools that are good for us, like we have small plots. Um, they sell just about anything. They sell uh, fertilizer, they sell seeds, they sell tools. Uh, they also have a good reference on... Um, different things that they grow on their plots, show you how they grow them and stuff like that. So it's very informational. So let's finish opening this up and see what we got. Now I ordered these, it took about three days to come in. So I got them yesterday. This is the first time I ordered from them, but I've been watching them for a while. So, okay, we got a little, we got our invoice um, right here. And so we have, I'm going to just read off what we got. 
we got the red maiden onions that we're going to be planting some onions over the uh, winter months uh, bolero carrots and then we got the uh, texas super sweet onion so we got a red onion a sweet onion and then carrots that we're going to be growing in the one plot i'm going to order some more stuff like brassicas for the other couple pro uh, plots and then i'm going to go to a farm and feed store i'm going to set i get a sack of red skin potato spuds that is going to be in this main thing here but uh, we're not going to do that till um, later in the fall so the potatoes they like cool weather they can handle a quick frost they don't get damaged too much there they don't like a hard freeze if there's a hard freeze i come out here and um last year and i covered them up with some blankets just to keep the hard freeze off we had i think two hard freezes and just throwing blankets over there uh, did really well for them all right so these are our onion our onion and carrot seeds in here and we'll go over these packages packets and stuff over there um and we're going to make another video when we start these seeds um how to start them i have some starting uh trays i'm going to show you how to mix the soil start these things so that when we do plant them in the garden they're ready to go so but that's another video okay and here is the main focus from today so this is buckwheat and this is going to be our cover crop for the summer this is what we're going to be putting in there let me just give that to you so you can see and the reason i got this for like i was saying it's a this is a um a quick turnaround cover crop so it means it grows really fast it gets flowers on top to uh to draw the bees in so it works good so this is the first time i'm doing a cover crop so we're going to see how how it all works i went on haas's website and i watched them how they um seed the plots so we're going to mimic what they did and then i'm going to take you along through the next few weeks and give you updates on this um, to show you how it's coming along so this is about a six week crop we're going to have in in six weeks i'm going to take my tiller turn it in uh, with some compost and some other stuff to get the soils ready and we're going to be planting um, the seedlings that we're going to start in the seed pot, uh, seed trays and you'll see that in another video planting those okay so let's get started we got a lot of work to do today okay guys so the first thing we're going to do we're going to take out these old corn stalks get those out of the ground and then we're going to work on to our our other beds and then uh, in a few minutes I'm going to bring out my tiller after we get everything pulled up and we're going to till this ground in so uh, yeah follow along oh so one of my tools I have I purchased is just a little uh, call it like a fork rake so I'm going to use this to get underneath the corn stalk roots and it'll make it easier to pull them out all right so let's get going All right, guys i just wanted to show you so and these are small these are small stalks the ones that i had over here original plot they were a lot bigger but you can see the the root ball is pretty big and the stem gets pretty thick so if you try to just till this into the ground you really need a big machine um so what i like to do is i come in here i pull them up i cut this off the root ball and then I try to, if these are thin like this, I try to chop them up with my lawnmower. And if I can chop them up, if they're not too big, chop them up enough, then I'll go ahead and put them back in the soil. My, uh, <clears throat> my hopes is later on that I'm going to get like a wood chipper that I can put over by the compost pile and then run these babies through it, chop it up, and it'll go into my compost pile. So give me another uh, form of matter to put in there so that I can build up my compost pile but anyway that's it now I'm not sure what this grass is called here it's a weed but it's a very invasive weed here um, if you let it get 
out of hand it just goes crazy um, I planted these two close together so it was kind of hard to weed in between them so the weeds got kind of uh, a little bit uh, more dense than I'd like it to okay guys we got the first area finished let me just show you so we got it all all cleaned up that's where the old corn was that I just showed you a minute ago so we got it all cleaned up um, I edged this line right here I'm gonna I'm gonna edge you can see the difference so I'm gonna edge this line with the shovel um, and then I'm gonna rake this smooth we're going to till it one more time rake it smooth again and then it's ready for planting the um, cover crop let me tell you you are never ever going to get every root out of these systems for the weeds no matter how much you pick out so the best thing I can tell you is with the cover crop hopefully it grows faster than the, the weeds that are left and once it shades out the the weeds they won't grow back as fast because the um, hopefully the um, buckwheat will take over until we till it in but um, the only reason I have a bunch of weeds in my garden is because I just don't have the time to come out here but if you have the time once a week to come out here and just till the ground or just the surface once a week in between your rows and stuff you you basically never have a weed problem but it's the time you got to put into it which you know I don't have a lot of time sometimes to do that okay guys we got done with that plot <clears throat> over there pulling all the weeds and getting it ready so we're starting on our second one this this one here has got the least amount of uh, amended soil out of all the ones that we've had I've amended amended all the other ones except for pretty much this one it's had some um, uh, it's had some compost and some fertilizer put into it for what we've been growing but it really hasn't had anything uh, to amount to much so um, <clears throat> we're gonna till this up I'm gonna pull as many weeds and stuff as I can out here too and then we're gonna till this up and so this is this plot and the other plot that I just showed you is gonna be my main two focuses of the um, cover cover crops if I have any seeds left after I do these two then we'll do some of the other smaller ones but um, I don't know how far that bags gonna go <clears throat> so it says one bag does a thousand square foot I don't, I don't think I have a thousand square foot between that and this but we'll see all right follow along The reason I want to pull these weeds is I want to try to get like I said you're not going to get all of them out but I want to try to get as many roots out as I can so that they don't like uh, start growing underground and uh, reprocessing the weeds all right this one's pretty well ready for um, for tilling <clears throat> I got the biggest weeds out which were the crawler weeds I didn't want them to stay in there so we're good to go this is ready for tilling and planting of the cover crop so let's move over to the other one we got to get uh, all that stuff out of there next it's starting to get warm all right guys follow me over there this is one of the raised beds that was here when we purchased the property I've uh, amended the soil probably two or three times in here so it's got a good amount of peat moss and other things but we're still gonna put some uh, manure in here and uh, maybe some topsoil turn it in put some uh, uh, fertilizer when we get ready to plant we're not doing that now all we're doing is tilling this tilling the dirt and getting rid of all these so these are cucumbers I planted late uh, for whatever reason we had tons of flowers nothing turned into fruit because I'm assuming we didn't have the bee population here to pollinate a lot of this stuff Plus the foliage is so thick that it's hard to see the little blossoms that are on here for the bees. And we don't have that many bees around right now because it's midsummer. But um, I'm going to be planting some flowers and stuff in here to, uh, and the, um, the cover crop we're going to grow will have flowers in it as well. And I wanted you to see too um, these tomato rings 
come in uh, in good for other things than just a tomato. So I planted the um, seeds of the cucumbers in the ground once they sprouted and they were, I don't know, about that tall. Then I put this ring around it here and they can crawl around in here and it kind of keeps them bunched up, keeps them off the ground and they hang down, easy to pick. Anyway, that's an idea rather than uh, making a trellis. I'm going to get uh, going here and finish up this here. Okay, guys, <clears throat> as you can see, we got everything um, pulled out, tilled up. Uh, we won't have to put the tiller in here because I was able to rake it and turn the ground over. And I, this is small enough I can do by hand if I have to do it again over the summer. I wanted to give you a couple tips. Uh, save you some money and uh, make your garden look nice. So I have these tent stakes. So in my garden, when I do rows, I like to have them nice and straight. Uh, and <clears throat> I like to have them at a certain interval, whether it be 12 inches, 14 inches, depending on what you're growing. So what I do is I just get these tent stakes. They're cheap. You can reuse them over and over again. Just put one at one end and one at the other end. Uh, measure on each end like 12 inches, 14 inches, whatever it is. And I just pull a string and when I'm planting my seeds, I just plant right underneath that string. Another thing to save some money. So I plant marigolds in the flower gardens around <clears throat> and this attracts bees because they like to go for the pollen. It also gives um, some bugs don't like the smell of the odor that these give out. So it kind of detracts away from some bugs, not all bugs, but some bugs don't like that. But my point is when these flowers die off and you can see like these buds here, you can take these buds off just get a stockpile of them and then let them dry out. And then for whatever, spring or fall, these don't do good over the over a freeze. I'm telling you that right now. But if you open those up, there's all these seeds in here. So you can see the seeds that are inside of those. So you, you can replant. Normally what I do is put my finger in, make a hole, and I'll put five or six of these in just so you make sure that you get a good, you know, one's going to germinate to create a, uh, a, a plant. And if, if all of them germinate, then you even have a better plant. If you don't have any at all, I'm sure <clears throat> between your neighbors or running around different, um, like, uh, shopping centers and stuff, they have flower beds over there. Just pick you one or two or three, whatever, get a handful of those dead ones, flowers. These come from my son's garden up in Michigan that he grew. When I went up to visit them, I just took a handful of them, put them in my in a plastic bag, and I brought them home with me. So you, I haven't shown you, but I've got them all in the front, around in the gardens and everything. And it's just from a handful of those that I got from uh, Michigan and his garden. <clears throat> so anyway, and then uh, there's another one. So these are called zinnias. And that's what they look like. They're a very good attractant for butterflies and bees as well. So I'm gonna put them, I put them also in my garden. As they go down, you can see what the flowers look like after they die off. You can pick all these flowers, save them as a bunch in a bag or a box or whatever, and then you can plant these. So basically you just open them up <clears throat> and all those little seeds that are in there, the little white seeds there, those are all flower seeds you can see. You can see some of the flower seeds here. So, but um, same thing, take them apart, take the seeds, put a hole in the ground, three or four of these little seeds. Uh, you can also put them in a growing tray, get an 18 or 36 or whatever size you want, 24. They have all different size growing trays. Put some potting soil in them and put, um, poke your finger or a pencil you can use, poke some holes in there. Drop four or five seeds in each one, cover them up, water them. Just a little tip so you guys know. There's other flowers too that that bloom and you can get seeds from, but these are the two that um, I use. And uh, I had sunflower seeds or sunflowers in my garden as well. We've got one more to do over here. I had a wild tomato growing. You can see the tomatoes. They kind of, that's another thing I don't have luck with is tomatoes. 
and you can see these plants right here these are the zinnias so the ones i just showed you with the seeds they were planted here and the seeds drop off and they just reproduce on their own this year for the zinnias i'm going to make a little two spots so i've got this area here that um i fenced off and i put herbs in here but uh, i grew cilantro which we got a little bit i grew italian parsley which i got a little bit but i'm going to rip all that out i'm going to put new soil in there and i'm just going to make this whole square thing zinnias so they grow they grow about that big and there'll be tons of flowers for the bees and the butterflies to come and these here is another <clears throat> another thing like if uh, i do a lot of these bamboo sticks so when you're growing um, cabbage or broccoli or whatever once they start getting tall if you get a lot of wind in your area i usually try stake this around the plant so the plant can grow in the middle of it if you get a wind strong wind and they blow over like we get some of the uh, rainstorms in the summertime here we get 40 50 mile an hour gust winds so once it gets pretty tall it could blow it over so i just tripod these around the plant each plant it grows in the middle and it keeps the plant from you know when it goes over keeps the plant from falling over so and they're not they're not too expensive i bought a box of i think 50 of them actually peggy bought them for me um and i just use them in my garden wherever i need them they also make good stakes like if uh if you have a trellis and you're trying to guide something to grow up to the trellis you can put those and angle them <clears throat> from where you plant it to the trellis so they'll grow up here get on the trellis and you can pull these out once they attach to the trellis <clears throat> it's another idea for them okay guys it is time for the next process and that is going to be tilling the garden areas before we get ready to plant the cover crop i'm using a tiller cultivator my sister was nice enough to give this to me because she didn't use it anymore because she's not gardening as big as she used to and i was just getting ready to buy one so it came in <clears throat> real handy <clears throat> now this isn't something that you want to continuously use for like ripping up raw grass to make a bed this is after everything the bed is <clears throat> already made and you're just retilling it i think it will till in the um cover cover crop that we're going to put in there but we'll have to see <clears throat> if it does or not um, i don't know how leggy it is but according to everything i read it's not too bad so you can see got everything cleaned up okay we're going to get get that thing going and i'll show you what to do Okay, that's it for this section uh, as you can see it goes pretty quick um, I'm gonna do the other section over there the same way and then I'm gonna get a hard rake we're gonna level it out and we're gonna show you how to plant those cover crop seeds it's one of my other tools a hard rake it's got I you know a good amount of rows of teeth over there so what we're gonna do is we're gonna just level this out so it's flat Then I'm gonna tap it down my thought is I'm gonna make with all these little tongs I'm gonna make little rows that go in the garden so when I spread out the seed they fall in the little rows and then I'm gonna turn it over and use the backside just to kind of scrape it and cover it up with uh, dirt let's get started yeah that's right what you doing Y'all hear my grandson. <laughs> He's helping Papa out in the garden today. And then we're going to go in the pool. We? Yeah? Yeah. We're going in the pool. Ooh. Be careful. Here. Go down over here. Help. 
That's it. You rake just like this. Good job. You rake. Got to level out the dirt. Got to level out the dirt. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Just like that, so we can plant the seeds. Okay. Good job, buddy. I'm going to do this section here now. Okay, guys, that's pretty much how you do that. I'm going to finish this section, go to the other section, level that off there, and then I'll come back and show you how I put the, the little bit of rose in and we'll spread the seed. Okay, so we got it all leveled out. We're going to take the rake, do our best we can just to try to make grooves before we sprinkle the seed. So, and I'm just, like I said, I'm just using this here. Actually, this, this, this works better doing it the way I'm doing it now. Just tapping it like this makes it better. Puts more grooves into the dirt so the seeds can have a place to stop. Finish tapping this one down the other one and then I'll be back at you when we do the seeds. Okay guys, so you can see how the rake makes little davits that way in the soil. So when the seeds drop, they'll drop into those deeper voids. And then we're going to just rake it over. These seeds only need a quarter of an inch. Eighth to a quarter of an inch soil on top of them, they'll germinate. Um, so that's good to go. Okay, let's get the seed and see what we can do. Okay, so I just opened the bag. You can take a look in there and see the seeds. You can see they're kind of they're kind of small um, I don't know that my spreader will go small enough in order to do this without um, dropping too many out at one time and I want to try to get this whole area and the other section covered with these here so I'm gonna do it by hand and then we're gonna rake it over so I'm just gonna grab a little bit and spread it out Okay guys, well that's how to do it. So we're gonna hit this with some water. I got my uh, sprinkler we're gonna put on here just to keep it wet. And um, we're gonna bring this back to you in about seven to 10 days and show you how much has come up. Hopefully we get um, almost 100% germination, I'm hoping. And one of the reasons you keep it wet too is because if seeds sit on top of the ground and they're not like buried under the water, if it keeps moist enough for long enough, that seed will sprout and the roots will go in and you'll, you'll get a, you know, that seed will germinate. So anyway, all right. I hope you like this video. I know it's a little longer one, but uh, I wanted to make sure I covered all the steps for you and so you could actually see everything and process that we were going to do. Um, so thank you for watching. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to our channel. This is a brand new channel. We're trying to grow it. I only have four subscribers, maybe five, I think five subscribers right now. So if you like this content and you want to see more of it, 
in the future if you subscribe to the channel ring that notification bell that way you know when we do upload another one and by all means if you have any questions comments or whatever something that you didn't understand i did or something i could do better please leave them in the comments and if there's something you want to see throughout the channel as it grows um, put that in the comments too and i'll try to get that on video for you so anyway that's it for today thank you subscribe give me a thumbs up please it's the most important thing right now subscription and thumbs up and until we see you next time in the garden stay safe god bless and we'll see you on the next one thanks so much for watching